Hello everyone. Since Adobe has launched Web SDK, everyone is confused. What exactly is Web SDK? How is it different from the current setup? And what all do we need to know before we start using Web SDK? So don't worry because we are going to cover everything in our video today. I'm Sirat. And I'm Tanma. And today we are going to cover all the topics with you. We'll start with what is Experience Platform Edge Network, what are its types and features. Then we will move to what is Adobe Web SDK, what are its components, and how is it different. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Tanme. Can you explain what is Experience Platform Edge Network? For sure. So Adobe Experience Platform Edge Network is basically allowing the customers to engage with the Adobe Experience Cloud Platform efficiently and definitely using its variety of services that the cloud provides and the efficient way of interacting with them that Edge Network provides. It all uh, provides us with a rock solid uh, implementation setup for tracking as well as uh, needs for various use cases with the edge work edge network server api we get access to multiple techniques for data collection as well as personalization and for uh, for sure adobe has our side covered for a bunch of advertising needs and marketing and definitely as an addition we now also have various servers that we uh, that adobe supports and are compatible for hits transmission and definitely iot devices along with set of boxes that can be set up for data transmission so definitely adobe experience platform edge network is providing a lot of versatile versatility as well as adaptability to our end so the best part is that we don't need any additional libraries but still we get fast interaction with the experience platform its network and its supported services yeah that's correct so the number of libraries that are now required for the setup to run have significantly decreased to one singular library that will be uh, like say if you are implementing website then it will be web sdk.js moving ahead with the types of pla experience platform edge network so we have three types one is for uh, web that is experience platform web sdk then the other one is experience platform mobile sdk then we have experience platform as network server api so experience platform web sdk is basically a javascript sdk that helps us in deploying adobe technologies to our website it simplifies the process to a great extent that we are going to learn in the coming slides. Yeah. And similarly, if, if we have a mobile application that we want to set up tracking, we can utilize experience platform mobile SDK. That is nothing but an extension to the V5 mobile SDK that allows the customers to uh, use the new deployment methodologies that are now being provided by the Adobe Experience Cloud. Then moving ahead with experience platform Edge Network Server API. This can be utilized for server to server communications as looking at the digital landscape today. It can be used for a variety of use cases for uh, advertising, marketing, and definitely as covered previously, we have a lot of servers that are compatible with this API. And additionally, if we have some use cases to cover the IoT devices or even set of boxes, we have also included that. Moving ahead with the features of Adobe Experience Platform Edge Network. So basically, Edge Networks provides us with a framework, which is kind of a low latency data collection that helps us in reusing the data that is collected. So once the data is collected and we have the data, we can send it to various channels as per our need. So we have a single consolidated system which allows the customer to manage their digital ecosystem very efficiently. Yeah, definitely. And the key point would be 
the single consolidated system here because using a single setup we can control a bunch of services that are connected to it and yeah, giving us more range of control over the implementation now let's look at the setup in a diagrammatic format so as we can see we have the three uh, basic use cases covered on the left side that is web sdk mobile sdk now web sdk will be for the website implementation and if we are trying to track our mobile application we'll be using the mobile sdk and for uh, server to server uh, api that means to serve server to server communication we will be using the uh, the third part that is being managed totally by a data collection so for all this we'll be relying on the data collection that is adobe launch and after processing the hits we'll be sending it over to platform as network now to note here we are not sending it directly to the services we are first sending it to the platform as network now once we have it in the platform edge network we can easily direct it to non-adobe services as well as adobe services like analytics audience manager target and experience platform so it kind of made the entire process very easy so talking about uh, the consolidation of all the features of experience platform edge network uh for, for definitely since we now we are now sending all the hits to adobe experience platform as network and then relaying it to all the services so there is only one point of in uh, implementation in our setup that means it reduces our time for required for implementation as we are now implementing for only one use case and that use case will be supported by all the other services and definitely uh, the number of libraries, as we talked in one of our previous slides, the number of libraries have significantly decreased to only one library. Like uh, for website, it would be WebSDK.js. That will definitely take care of the cost as now the setup is more efficient and we can uh, configure the setup in such a way that it is cost efficient as well as uh, uh, efficient in all the, all the overalls. And it has increased the speed and decreased the cost. So kind of the best way for a business, right? And it creates a sustainable approach where it will be easier for the customer to accommodate any changes that can come into the business. And it gives business the opportunity to customize data collection based on their specific needs. Yeah. So now let's talk about specifically Adobe Web SDK, all the things that are relevant to the website part of things. So what is Web, Adobe Web SDK? Coming back to the question. So it is a client side JavaScript library that allows the customers to make use of the services provided by Adobe Experience Cloud Network. And definitely it involves all the services provided by Experience Platform Edge Network as well. So it is not just a wrapper around an existing library. It's an entire new library, which is built from ground up. And the agenda for that was to accommodate various functionalities and end the challenges that were faced due to the existing libraries, like better dependency management and the versioning issues. Before we understand that what new Adobe has given us, we need to understand what was the existing process, right? So we have the website, then we have Adobe launched. Then we have various libraries on the website, like appmajorment.js, dil.js, at.js, visitor.js. Then we have specific data that is being sent to various Adobe products, like events, ERs and props are sent to Adobe Analytics. You can see that for four different platforms, we have four corresponding libraries. Now let's see what are the changes that are brought in by Adobe due to Web SDK. So as we can see here, as Irit mentioned, uh, the number of libraries have been reduced to only one. All the other libraries have been removed and now we'll be using only a singular library that is WebSDK.js. And for the part of data transmission, we'll be using uh, the experience data model that is called XTM 
it is nothing but a schema for the data that will be passing on for the hits. And as you can see, we are first transmitting data to Adobe Edge network first. And whatever services are connected to the Edge network will uh, get the relayed hits. That means all the hits would be sent to Adobe Analytics, Adobe Audience Manager, Adobe Target, and any other services that can be a non-Adobe product as well. But whatever is connected to the Edge network will receive the data in the form of XDM. Now, the key part here is that XDM would be understood and as accepted by that particular service. Uh, so definitely the data transmission has become efficient and more versatile. Now uh, let's move ahead with the components of Web Adobe Web SDK to understand it better. We first start with schemas. Now this is nothing but a model that is accepted by two entities to communicate with each other. As seen in the natural world, there is something called language that two people use for interacting with each other. Similarly, in the technological world, if two entities, maybe two servers, if they are trying to communicate with each other, they should have an acceptable language that we call a schema. And now these schemas can be large as well as complex, depending upon the use case that a person may have while implementing. Next is the data streams. So any configuration that you are making to the Adobe Experience Platform SDK, you'll be actually making it into the data streams. All the services would be set up here. And in fact, all the configuration for the non-Adobe products will also be made here. Then we have data sets. So we are recording the data and we need to store it somewhere, right? Once the data is successfully ingested into the experience platform, it is stored within the data lake as data set. Now you can consider data set as a table which have columns and rows and that are based on the schema that we decide. Then we have services like Adobe Analytics, Adobe Event Formatting and Adobe Target. Now you know everything about Adobe Web SDK. That's it from our side. Do like and share our video. Looking forward for the next few videos that we'll be covering in this series. So stay, stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you.